This first episode of Vintage Vigilance, like all of our content, is brought to you by our biggest supporters, the EDHCC Club members. We love you guys and we can't thank you enough for your generosity and support. It's been nearly three decades since Wizards of the Coast released what is often called the very first trading card game, Magic the Gathering. In the near 28 year long history of this game we love, the company has produced billions of cards and believe it or not, the player base was higher than 35 million players before we even hit 2019. And of course the game and player base have created so many different formats. Today in 2021, the five most popular ones I'd say are Popper, Pioneer, Modern, Standard, and of course my favorite, Commander, also known as EDH. Why? Well, most local game stores support these formats. They're also affordable and can be fun for everyone, especially for the casual player base. But today, you will see some cards that are only usable in the two oldest formats of the game, which are Legacy and Vintage. This series will show you how fast a game of Magic the Gathering can really be. You could say this series is no holds barred, or better yet, no cards barred. I am your host, BT, and folks, this series has been eight months in the making. At last, allow me to welcome you to our new stage, known as Vintage Vigilance. Now then, let us introduce our gamers and their opening hands. First, in this corner, playing his Dark Depths Turbo deck, with an opening hand of two forests, Dark Depths, Duress, Elvish Reclaimer, Deathrite Shaman, and Mox Diamond, he is the fearless Sir Armin. Next, in this corner, having Mulligan down to six with his Storm Artifact build, with an opening hand of a Scalding Tarn, Fluster Storm, Force of Will, Ancestral Recall, Sensei's Divine Top, and Mock Sapphire, he is the ultimate collector. This is Ryan. Now, feast your eyes and let the game commence. For their first turns, Armin plays a forest and casts Mox Diamond, discarding a land. Then he casts Duress, looking to discard from Ryan's hand. But Ryan casts Force of Will, exiling a Flusterstorm from his hand and paying one life to protect the rest of his hand. Armin then casts Elvish Reclaimer and passes. Ryan starts his turn by casting Mox Sapphire into a turn one Ancestral Recall to draw three new cards. Next he plays and sacks Scalding Tarn, paying one life to net a Tundra from his deck into play. Next he casts Soul Ring, followed by Sensei's Divining Top and uses his floating mana from the ring to check his top three cards with his sensei's top. Then he passes. Armin plays Dark Depths, which comes in with 10 ice counters. Next he casts Inquisition of Kozilek, which forces Ryan to reveal his hand. Ryan discards Monastery Mentor as it's the only card in his hand with CMC 3 or less. Then Armin casts Deathrite Shaman. Then he moves into combat 
and attacks Ryan with the Reclaimer for a single damage and passes. For Ryan's turn, he taps out and also taps his top to draw a card, but holds priority and casts Paradoxial Outcome which he uses to return all his artifacts back to his hand and draw an equal amount of cards, which in this case is three. Then he gets an extra draw thanks to his top's effect that's on the stack. Then he recasts the Mox, the Soul Ring, and the top once more. Then he uses his floating mana off the ring to once again check his top three cards. Then he taps his top to draw a card and place it on the top of his deck and plays Polluted Delta before passing. Armin draws and simply passes. For Ryan's turn, he recasts his top again and once again checks his top three cards. Then he passes. However, before the end step, Armin uses his Reclaimer's effect to sack a forest and nets a Thespian stage from his deck into play. For Armin's turn, he moves straight into combat on his turn and pokes Ryan again with his Elvish Reclaimer for one damage. Then he passes. Before the end step, Ryan uses his top's effect to check his top three cards once again. Ryan starts his turn by casting Preordain. He scries one card to the bottom and then draws a card. Then he uses his top's effect to check his top three cards once more. Unhappy with them, he sacks his Delta, paying one life, then an underground sea from his deck into play. He uses his top's effect again to check his new top three cards. Then he passes. Before the end step, Armin moves to finish the game as he uses his shaman's effect to exile the scalding ton in Ryan's grave to gain a mana and pays two mana total to turn his thespian stage into a copy of Dark Depths with no counters on it. This forces him to sack the original Dark Depths through the Legend Rule, but he can now sack the copied Depths and get a Merit Lage token, which is a 2020 Flying Indestructible. The game is now over. It is what I'd be saying if Ryan didn't have and cast Repeal, where X is zero, to bounce the massive token and then draw a card. Having lost his advantage, Armin still fights on like a champion and casts another copy of Duress. But Ryan casts Mental Misstep to counter it. So Armin moves into combat and attacks with both of his creatures for two damage and passes. Ryan starts his turn by casting both Mox Opal and Mox Emerald. Followed by Tinker. He sacks his Soul Ring to it to net the best card in the game of Magic from his deck into play. The Mighty Black Lotus. He sacks it immediately for three black to help cast Bolus' Citadel. Then he taps his top to draw a card, but once again holds priority. And off his Citadel, casts another copy of Paradoxial Outcome, paying for life. He bounces the top and his three Moxes to draw four cards, plus one from the Sensei Top's effect that's still on the stack. Next, he plays Telerian Academy and recasts his three Moxes, as well as a Sensei's top. He taps his Academy and Artifacts for eight mana total, 
then taps his top to draw once again, but once more holds priority and casts his third copy of Paradoxical Outcome, again bouncing his moxes and top back to hand. And with the top draw on the stack as well, he gets to basically draw five cards here. He once again recasts his moxes, and after that casts Vampiric Tutor, paying two life to tutor a card the top of his deck, which thanks to his citadel, he can use right away. And so, with a storm count of 14 so far, he reveals the card he'll place on top is Tendrils of Agony, which he'll cast to drain life Armin completely in one shot and take the win. Well, that was fast. Both players had explosive starts, but poor Armin didn't have much in the way of mana power. If he was just one or two turns quicker, I think his merit lays would have made it. Especially since his duress played in it so he had some knowledge of Ryan's hand. Speaking of Ryan, I think he owes his win to Sensei's Divine Top. He was able to rearrange his top cards several times that game. And while the paradoxical outcome was a hero giving him tons of mass card draw, he may not have been able to reach those copies of the card without the Divining Top's help. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoy our content, consider becoming a patron. We'll give you access to sweet things such as entries into our majestic prize tournaments, bonus entries into giveaways, your nickname in our EDH CC club, and so much more. Also, if you're looking to grab some custom sleeves or play mats in the near future, please check out the site yourplaymat.com. And you can use our promo code BT10YP or the affiliate link in the description below and you'll receive 10% off your order. So not only do you get some cool new swag, but you also greatly help out the channel at the same time. That's it for our first Vintage Vigilance episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again to our EDHCC club, aka our patron pledge hammers for making this all possible. Our content wouldn't exist without you all. Until next time, much love, stay warm, stay safe, and keep on, keep on card gaming. Take care, everyone.